Happy Monday and happy belated birthday, Jazz. I hope you enjoy this work set. It's a fast one, just like you. You're a quick little sprinter, and that's what this is all about, so we'll have some fun with this one. But to get us there, plank the down dog, three to five reps, floor facing angel for three to five second hold, prone shoulder raise for six to 10 alternating reps, funeral glide, knee push up for three to five, and a back lunge to high knee for four per side. Two to three rounds there, this is gonna help kind of work out kind of 21.1 plus Saturday's work set, and it's gonna also get us prepped for what's to come in our work set today. After that, we have a plank lean of six alternating for two second holds per side, dumbbell pullover for five to 10 and a three second uh, eccentric, lago ski jump for 20 seconds, so just steady state movement, burpee breakdown for three, so that's that burpee kind of broken down into three pieces, and we'll go through that momentarily, and then a dumbbell standing march for 30 seconds. Two to three rounds of that, get you ready to go. In that, you can also kind of Substitute some of the movements that you're going to be playing with in the work set or do a little quick practice round before you start the work set. The workout today is 30 burpees, 30 box jumps. Done. 30 30 for time, finished one time through. So it's going to be a fast little burner, it's going to be a fast little sprint. I'm looking forward to hearing about how this one goes. But yeah, it's going to be a quick one, so I hope you guys enjoy. After you're done the work set, we're going to move into this little piece. You can take this anywhere from one to three rounds. We're looking at just a little bit of shoulder load. So we have our IWs and Ys, five each, uh, with a light, light load or no load, just empty hand is perfectly fine as well. Internal, external rotation, and then a windmill for three to five aside. One to three rounds just to show your body and shoulders some love, moving you into your cool down, which is also gonna be a little bit more upper body focused today. Let's get you ready, we'll have some fun, and get you ready to go. All right, let's get our feet underneath those hips. We'll take the arms big and tall up overhead. We're gonna stretch it over to one side. Oh, we're gonna stretch it to the other side. We're gonna come back to center. We're gonna scratch our back and reach through the elbow. We're gonna come back up, big stretch. Scratch your back and reach through the elbow. Oh, big stretch up overhead. We're gonna bring our hands to our hips. We're gonna take those hips around a few times, just a couple times, just to wake things up in the midsection of the way. And then we'll come back to center and get our feet together. Big stretch overhead. We'll take it all the way to the floor, touching those toes, and walk up the shin. Coming back down, framing the foot. We're gonna step back into our lizard. Nice and square in those hips. We'll take the inside hand up, bending at the 90. We're gonna reach straight ahead. Pull back, straight ahead, pull back, and straight ahead, and pull back. Big reach up, rotate, forearm down. Come back up, plant that hand, step back into our down dog, reaching those hips. We'll come back into our plank, we'll step the other foot up. Inside hand's gonna reach way up to the sky, bend at the 90, reach straight ahead, pull back, straight ahead, pull back, straight ahead, pull back, reach up, rotate, forearm to the floor, come back up, big stretch. Plant that hand down, we'll step back into our down dog. Reaching those hips, press and hold the heel. Press and hold the heel. Come back to center, extend into our plank, tiptoeing those feet all the way up. We'll roll ourselves up, big stretch. Reach to one side, reach to the other side. And let's get you fired up and ready for action. We'll have some fun today. If you'd like to do some gentle warm up on your own, still you can pause the video, take that down, some thread the needles, cat cows, scat push ups are always a win. Please do so, and then come back and join me for our first phase of warm up. All right, our first phase of warm up is going to kickstart off with a fan favorite, our plank to down dog. So I'm going to get myself set up in that nice plank. Ribs pull in, shoulders press up to the sky, establish that good plank position first. And then I set those shoulders and as I pull back my hips into those knees and those ankles, my armpits are gonna stay facing those toes. I'm gonna set those shoulders nice and strong and then I'm gonna come back into that plank. So I'm allowing myself to soften into those knees and ankles depending on where I need to allow myself to go to get that nice angle on the hip and set those shoulders well. So allow those knees to be soft. Don't worry about keeping them super tight and straight. Allow them to soften so we can get that nice 
triangular hip action uh, going at that peak. From there, we have three to five reps. We're gonna lay on the floor for the next couple exercises. So we're gonna get ourselves set up on the floor. My hands are gonna be beside my chest, and I'm gonna move into that floor-facing angel hold. And if you'd like to add in the humeral glide before this, you can. So if you'd like to add in that shoulder forward, shoulder back, just to set your position, I endorse it fully. It's always a good time. We're gonna pull our ribs and hips in, and then we're gonna squeeze our shoulders together, lifting the hands up off the floor if we can, holding for five seconds, and then lowering and relaxing for a second. Then from there, we'll reset and do it again. I highly suggest taking a moment in between each of those reps just to disengage, reset the body position so you can get that core set, the shoulder set properly so that we can get that nice smooth pull through the shoulders to lift those hands up. Don't worry if the fingers don't come fully off the ground or if it's really challenging to get that hand off the floor. I just want you to think about squeezing the shoulder blades so the hands come straight up regardless of how high they come. So really focus on those shoulders pulling together to lift that elbow up and lift those hands up. After that, we're gonna extend the arms and do a very similar movement, but just a little bit different. So we're gonna move back into that prone shoulder raise. So my toes are gonna be together. I'm gonna pull my ribs and hips in, armpits pressed down, palms pressed down. In this position, I am going to lift an arm, maintaining that hollow, and then lower and then lift the other side, maintaining the hollow, and lower. And I'm gonna alternate back and forth six to eight, or sorry, six to 10 reps. Now with this, we wanna make sure our primary focus is that hollow position, so that pulling in of the ribs and hips, and those armpits pressing down to the floor, so we lift and hold that position. Very important that that is our primary focus with this movement. It's very easy to establish this hollow and as we lift our arm, break through the ribs. So we wanna make sure that we're nice and set through those ribs the entire time. Like the floor facing angel hold, it's not about how high you get off the floor, it's about the engagement through the midsection and then lifting the arm from there. After we're gonna move into some pressing, and we're gonna move into that humeral glide to knee push up. So I get set back up on the floor, hands in the same position as they were for my floor facing angel. I'm gonna pull my shoulders forward to where I don't want them, and then I'm gonna pull them back to where I do. My wrist is stacked under my elbow, I pull my ribs in, I press to my knees, keeping that good hollow position, and then I'm gonna lower forward and down, keeping that engagement, and then release at the bottom. Once I get to the bottom, I'll reset. So I pull the shoulders forward, I pull them back, my ribs and hips pull in, I press up, I can meet also lower down with a three second eccentric if I'd like, but I wanna make sure that I'm lowering all the way down with control and not going part way and then disengage and drop it. So try and make sure we're finding a tempo that we can maintain control all the way to the ground. Once we're on the ground, then disengage, reset the tension, go again. After our humeral glide to knee push up, we get to stand up a little bit. And we're gonna work our back lunge to high knee. So what we're gonna work on, it's a little joint movement set. I can stand up nice and tall, feet in my squat stance roughly. I am going to pull my, my foot back into that back lunge, lowering down, standing into that nice high knee. I can bring my foot down, then step into that lunge, come back up into the high knee. The biggest thing is we're finding our range for our lunge that allows us to stay as vertical and upright and stacked with the knee, hip, shoulder as best we can. If you're not super down on lunging today and you're like, ah, not really feeling that today, you can work on another option for you, which is a nice back scale, working on keeping that hip nice and square, and then pulling that leg through into that nice high knee position, lowering down and then taking it from there. So one of those two, we just wanna work on that good hinge, all right, with the hamstring, and the high knee, or working that nice back lunge into that nice high knee step. From there, quick little recap, we have our plank to down dog for three to five reps, into our floor facing angel for three to five seconds, prone shoulder raise, six to 10 alternating with a little pause on each rep, into our humeral glide to knee push up for three to five, 
back lunge to high knee for four a side, two to three rounds. Taking that down nice and steady, stretching out the weekend, plus 21.1, and getting that body ready to go for your work to come. Pause the video, take that down. I'm gonna walk you through that next phase. We're gonna continue warming up the upper body and getting those burpees ready for action. All right, our next exercise we're gonna work on is a plank lean. We got six total count reps, but we're gonna hold per side. So I'm gonna get myself into my plank, and I'm gonna stay facing the camera so you can see my shoulders. I establish my plank first, so I pull the ribs in, press the shoulders up, grip the floor, and then I'm gonna lean over to one side, holding for two seconds, keeping the arms straight. Lean to the other side, hold for two seconds. Shift to the other side, two seconds. And just really focusing on keeping those shoulders over top of the hands the entire time. Nice and smooth, nice and steady, working through that nice engagement through the upper back. You wanna keep those shoulders slightly protracted. You wanna make sure we're pressing them up to the sky the entire time we're leaning and shifting. Our next exercise, we get to lay down. We're gonna work on our dumbbell pullover, which is gonna be a nice opportunity to kind of stretch out our lats and our arms a little bit, plus strengthen the pecs a bit. So I'm gonna get my feet flat. Just outside of my fingers, like a bridge, I'm gonna take hold of the dumbbell by the top of the bell. So the bottom of the bell is hanging. I'm pressing into the dumbbell with soft elbows. I'm gonna pull my ribs in so I have a nice connection to the floor. From here, I'm gonna press into the dumbbell as I lower the arms down to the floor. Keeping those arms nice and straight with a soft elbow, I'll touch the floor and come back up. So we're keeping those arms kind of nice and stable as we lower down. Nice and steady, keeping the low belt back in contact, and then coming back up. So we're taking that three second eccentric. If you have a little bit more range, you can hold on to both bells, and that's gonna give you a little bit more range of motion to the floor, and then pressing back up. Okay. So either one works for you. It doesn't have to be heavy, nor does it even have to be loaded. If you'd like to do this with a tea towel in your hands, and just using as a little bit of resistance you can just to get the arms engaged as well. Just using it to help strengthen up those arms and get those lats a little stretched out and strengthen up the pecs. Now our next exercise is our lateral ski jump for 20 seconds. So you're gonna work on this nice and smooth. I don't really care about reps for this. I just want you to kind of move steady for 20 seconds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load that foot, get the arms and the legs working together as we swing and jump, and then swing and jump. Controlling my lateral energy per side, we're trying to really focus on that nice control and then change direction. Now, if you're not a jumper, that's okay. You can do this with a step and then come back up. So we swing step, swing step, and we don't pull that other foot uh, to follow until that other leg is in contact with the floor fully and we're comfortable with that. Also, if you'd like to play around with the length of the step of the jump, it doesn't have to be very big. So we can start jumping. If you'd like to start playing with the jump, with a little smaller jump, and then as you feel comfortable, making that jump a little longer, a little more explosive, but it's up to you in terms of where you wanna go with that, with your comfort zone. After that, we're gonna break down the burpee a little bit. So we have three reps of the burpee breakdown. The burpee breakdown basically breaks down this movement into three distinct pieces. The first piece is the lower. So we're gonna bring our hands down to the floor. We're either gonna jump or step our feet back and lower our chest and thigh to the floor with pretty smooth, steady pace. We're not throwing ourselves down, but we are controlling it a little bit with a little bit of um, speed. So about a three second lower is pretty smooth to allow ourselves to stay tight and set the elbow. So I'm gonna get myself set up. I come down with the hands. I jump back, maintaining that contact. My elbow is stacked over my hand. My shoulders are pulled back and my ribs are in. The next phase is a press to the knees. So I'm still in my hollow, so all those pieces of the humeral glide knee push-up reign supreme in here. And then I'm gonna jump, so I'm gonna pop and jump my feet to my hands. Stand tall, repeat. So again, we're trying to get our feet flat close to the hands in kind of a squat stance. Don't worry about trying to bring your feet too close together when you're jumping your feet in, because that requires a ton of mobility, and it can really put a, a 
challenge on the ankles for us if we, if we don't have that mobility. So again, just a couple things to think about. As I come down, I jump or step back. I maintain tension. My shoulders are pulled back, my elbows are strong. I push, maintaining my core. My hands are under my shoulders. My knees are still on the ground. I'm gonna pop my feet in. Flat feet, stand tall. So it can be a little checklist for yourself. You don't have to hold in those positions for any allotted time, but just enough time for you to experience, okay, my core is tight. Okay, my hands are under my shoulders. Elbows are still. Any of those pieces you need to think about, give yourself that moment to make sure that they're there. And if they're not, fix it. So give yourself that, that okay to fix that position for yourself. Last but not least, we get to stand up. We're gonna work a dumbbell standing march. And we're gonna do this any way you'd like. So you can hold on to two dumbbells, a single dumbbell. You can hold it at the suitcase, the front rack, the overhead, the goblet, the zercher, whatever you would like to do for this. I would like you to explore those options for yourself. And what we're looking at, I'm gonna turn to the side. We're looking at that leg balancing nice and strong. So we're not letting that leg cave as we lift that other knee up. So I shift my weight, that leg is strong. I'm squeezing my glutes to help stabilize that knee that's balancing. And I'm just gonna work back and forth for 30 seconds. The speed is up to you. But I want you to make sure that you're trying to stay mobile for 30 seconds. So you're moving constantly. So the speed is not super important to be going fast nor slow. Just find the pace that works for you to continue moving for that 30 seconds. Just firing up those legs and hip flexors, getting things ready for what's to come. As a quick recap, we have our plank lean, six alternating two second holds per side, dumbbell pullover for five to 10 and a three second hold, uh, sorry, three second negative on the way down. Lateral ski jump for 20 seconds, burpee breakdown for three, dumbbell standing march for 30 seconds, two to three reps. Pause the video, take that down, get yourself ready to go. We're gonna move into a couple of the movements in our work set to give you some options and have some fun with them. All right, so our movements in the workout, what we have, we have 30 burpees and 30 box jumps. So I'm just gonna go over a couple things with the burpee. We did the burpee breakdown, which is gonna cover all the pieces that we need. I'm just gonna show you two burpees at speed with the step and the jump. So our full burpee, nice and smooth without the pauses. We come down, chest sky, come back up. Or we come down, step, chest sky, step up, and rock it. Or any combination of those. You can step back, jump in, jump back, step in, Whatever you need to do, do so. Have some fun with those burpees and uh, take them down. Focus on those key points of performance in our humeral glide to knee push up, trying to maintain them as much as we can, especially the core engagement, because that helps stabilize the shoulder. Now, our other option, if you're looking at me going, nope, nope, no push ups for me today, we're looking at a squat thrust, which is basically the burpee without the push up. Feet go out, feet come in, or Hands come down, step it out, step it in, or any combination of those things. A few key points to think about for that squat thrust, making sure the hand stays under the shoulder, the shoulders are good and strong, and that core is engaged so we don't get the sway hip and the sway back. We wanna make sure we're nice and stable and that shoulder stays over the hand. So play with those, see what suits you the best, and pick that option that you're gonna do. And keep moving steady, I will say. You can mix and match the burpees and the squat thrust as well. If you're someone who's like, I got burpees, but volume is tough. Volume is really tough. I'd rather see you alternate every five. Try to slowly start to build that burpee volume and use the squat thrust to help keeping you moving forward to kind of fill the gap in those reps. Afterwards, we have our box jump. So I have a box here. If you have a box, an apparatus to step up onto a chair, an ottoman, whatever it happens to be, please make sure it's stable and safe. But the box jump, what we're looking at is throwing those hips back quick. Those knees are gonna come out. We're gonna extend through the legs, keeping the knees out as well. And as we land, landing with those knees nice and soft. So I'm gonna turn to the side, we're gonna jump, quick jump, stand tall, I'm gonna step in. Stepping down is probably one of the nicer ways to treat your ankles and your Achilles. So please keep that in mind. Unless you have a really soft rebound, I highly suggest stepping off the box. 
Now one more jump, we get the hips. Then opening up the hips and knees, step. If you have an apparatus and you're not comfortable jumping on it, what you can also work on is the step. So we fully extend that leg and the hip, then the top of that step. You can also work on the lateral step over, side to side, working on that good knee alignment and some lateral movement. I love those things. They always get a bad rep because they, they seem easy, but whoo, they burn, they burn a lot. So never shy away from that, especially if you want to work on some lateral movement, if that's something that's not super strong for you. That's a nice place to play with that. So it's a really nice option for you. But if you're gonna do it, don't worry about bringing the foot down in between reps. Keep the foot up so we keep that nice knee alignment and it gives us a chance to work on our ankles, all right? Also, we have a few other options if you'd like besides the box options. I'll put those on the workout description, one of which being a jump squat. So we get that good squat, we drive, and we land. So we're just leaving the ground a little bit, getting that explosive hip. We can also work on the tuck jump. So I get that good hip back. I extend vertical, all right? Bringing my knees to my chest, landing soft, and then continuing the next rep. These are not about rebounds. These are all about individual jumps, working on that explosive hip and that soft um, landing. So absorbing the impact. On the other side, we have our broad jump. So if you have space, you can work on that horizontal jump, working on that nice long jump or short jump, but landing with that good soft absorption with the knees out and trying to land like a ninja, super quiet. So a couple different options. Check the bottom of the workout description. I'll have more down there for your box jump options, but it really depends on what you have access to at the moment. Pause the video, take down the workout, you guys. Have fun with this one. It's a burner, it doesn't take very long. 30-30, done. One time, it's gonna be a good sprint. But remember, if you're doing jumps, make sure you pause, make sure you give you that moment so all of your jumps are accurate and stable. Pause it, rock it, come back. We're gonna talk about our uh, shoulder rehab, prehab after this. Our last little piece of the work set is a little bit of shoulder kind of love, we'll say. We'll just call it shoulder love, because that's what it is. It's gonna burn a little bit after this workout, but it's a little bit of shoulder love. So what we're gonna do is go through the I, Ws, and Ys. And you can use this with light loading if you'd like, or, or empty handed. But please make sure it's light loading, like two and a half pounds, one pound dumbbells, cans of soup, who knows, but nothing heavy, all right? None of that chunky soup, because that gets super heavy on the arms. <laughs> so make sure it's a normal broth-based soup. I'm just kidding. All right, whatever soup cans you got at home, or tomato paste, whatever you got. But anyway, we get our feet set up in our hip width stance, and I'm gonna hinge like I was gonna do a deadlift. My arms are gonna hang directly down from my shoulder, and I'm going to lift my arms straight up for the I, and then come back down. And then for the W, I'm gonna pull my hands up so I frame my head, so I look like so, in that nice hinge, and then I come back down, and then my Y, I go out on the angle to make that nice Y and back down. So that'd be one of each rep. I like to alternate, go I, W, Y, and we'll do that five times. So keeping in mind, just a quick look to the side for that hinge. Back is nice and set, just like a deadlift. Hands are just underneath of the shoulders. We go through the I, the W, and the Y. And then we stand. After that, our internal, external stems from that hinge as well. But I would stand up and give yourself just a moment to kind of stretch out. You're gonna get yourself back into that good hinge. My hands are hanging just directly below my shoulders but my palms are gonna face back. I'm gonna pull my elbows up to the side, like a robot, and I'm gonna lift my hands straight up, and then come back down. Straight up, back down. And then I straighten and stand. From the front, I hinge, I pull back into that nice straight up position, I pull up and down. Up and down, straighten, stand tall. Last but not least is a windmill. We've been doing these a lot more lately. It's a great exercise for rotation, opening up that shoulder and T-spine, and also working on the hips. 
So what we're gonna work on is our feet standing in our sumo stance. It gives us a little bit more room. You're gonna pick your favorite arm overhead. Armpits pointing straight ahead to the front. I press into the arm. My arm is down to reach for the floor. I'm gonna pull my hips back and I'm gonna rotate at the low rib as I take it down as far as I feel comfortable, maintaining that good shoulder position. So even though I'm rotating low rib, my shoulder is staying locked in this position. It's not turning on its own. It's staying in this nice overhead position and the rotation happens through my torso and my body. So take your time with these. There's no tempo, but I don't, they're not meant to be done quickly. So really focus on your range and your rotation and exploring that good hip hinge. As a quick recap, we have IWs and Ys for five each, internal, external rotation for five, and windmill three to five per side, and anywhere from a one to three round kind of option. That's a kind of an optional option that's gonna take you into your cool down, or your warm down if you like to call it that as well. That's what I've been kind of coining them as the past couple days, because they really haven't cooled you down. They've just made you like, woo! I'm a little extra warm now, but my arms feel good. So I hope you guys have a fantastic time taking down this burner. I hope you extend your birthday celebration just a little bit there, Jazz, to today. I hope you had a fantastic day yesterday, and I hope this makes it a little extra special. Have a great day, everyone. Work for quality, have fun, and we'll see you tomorrow for some more fun programming. Bye, you guys.